Welcome to our site building with Drupal 7. Right now I'm going to go over installing Drupal. In this segment of the video series, I talk about installing on a local server. I also mentioned some videos you might want to check out on drupalize.me that kind of help you get a local server set up on different platforms. I mentioned installing on a remote server. One thing that I don't really mention uh, in this segment here is something else you could do, which is find a hosting provider that has a one-click installation of Drupal. You sign up with them, click a button, Bam, you're up and set, and then you're going on with our series. So let's learn how to install Drupal. Okay, here we go. Uh, welcome to our site building series. We're gonna start this series off with installing Drupal, because in order to use Drupal, we've got to install it. Um, there's two methods we're gonna discuss for installing. One is installing and using it locally. Another would be installing and using it on a remote server. Most of this will be done and shown locally. Um, if you have any questions or don't really know how to deal with installing and using a local web server, I recommend Drupalize Me under the topic backend and infrastructure. We have videos on setting it up for uh, an Ubuntu server or on a Windows or a Mac machine. Um, so we've got a bunch of great videos here that'll help you get up and started there. Okay, so in order to do this, we go to drupal.org and we need to download Drupal. You can see on the home page there's this get started with Drupal. We go ahead and click there. This will bring us to the download page. It will tell us what is the most recent release in the green box. So if we click on that, it'll bring us to uh, different downloads. You can choose your flavor of download. If you want a nice smaller size, go ahead and get a tarball. If not, grab your zip. So downloading. One thing to uh, keep in mind here, this kind of hooked me the very, very first time that I installed Drupal. There's a couple things we gotta do first. And I'm gonna go through them because you know, I had to do this one time. Um, I'm not a server techie or anything like that. And we do have to create a database because during the installation of Drupal, it will ask us for database name and user. And another little secret thing that hit me hard, I couldn't figure out forever why I could not get this installed. And here's what it is. Okay, right now I'm just in a, uh, an FTP program, uh, mainly because what happens here is once you unzip the files in the uh, Drupal folder, Here's everything that's included with the download. The first thing that happened to me was I was just using my normal way of looking at files. The problem is most people don't have the ability to see invisible files. And what you gotta normally do is you're probably gonna wanna drag these files to a folder that you're gonna run this from locally. Well, if you're just dragging the files and it's not grabbing the hidden files, gonna have some issues. So as you can see, there's a couple hidden files here. A big important one is the .htaccess file. So I would just you know, select all of them and we're gonna uh, go ahead and copy these over to a folder that I'm gonna run this from. And then from here, what I'll probably want to do is create my database. Now the getting started videos on running your server kind of go over creating a database um, using MAMP, which is on a Mac or WAMP if you're on a Windows machine. Um, and this kind of natively installs something called um, PHP My Admin. And if you run the start page after installing MAP, you'll see at the top there's a tab, PHP My Admin. This is kind of just like an online browser GUI, if you will, kind of for managing databases, creating them. Um, not going to get too nitty gritty into this, but it's not very difficult. We're really just typing in a few things and we'll be done. We'll have a database. All right, so let's just go ahead and create a database. Nice and simple. Input box right in your face right there. Create a new database. So let's just name this uh, something obvious, D7 for Drupal 7 and install. <clears throat> Hit the create button. Database is created. Can't get much simpler than that. Not done. Um, we need a user. So um, let's go ahead and add a user under privileges. Add a new user. Username, I'm just gonna call this D7 admin. Uh, any host, local host also just say local um, password I usually just have it generate a password for me I go ahead and click and copy my password and what we have to do down here is we've got to give this user some privileges so we're gonna check all and then we're gonna hit go oddly enough for some odd reason we still have one more we need under administration we got a grant forget this step not gonna work so go all right we have a database 
we have Drupal downloaded and put in a folder. And now let's visit that folder locally. And here's what we are going to get. Okay. So we have a installation profile we can select. For now, for starting, we're just going to use the standard. Basically, what this is going to do is uh, pretty much turn on some pre-needed modules and some modules that are most commonly used. Um, so it's just the best way to go. Uh, it pretty much includes anything you're going to need to kind of get started in learning. So we're going to save and continue. Obviously, we're choosing English, but if you needed other languages, you can uh, click this link here, and it's going to teach you what to do and how to go about downloading other languages to get other options. Save and continue. Okay, database type. Um, because we're on a local MAMP server, we're using a MySQL database. You do have other options. If you uh, know what you're doing there, go ahead and choose those. Okay, so our database name. Here's where we made that stuff before. So database is D7 install. Our user was D7 admin. And we had that password in our clipboard. So save and continue. All right, goes through a thing, bam. All right, Drupal is technically now installed. What we're doing here is just basically setting some configurations. Uh, don't get too never nervous here. These um, are able to be adjusted, modified, changed, whatever, once you have got it installed. Um, so you can go ahead and give yourself a site email address. If you already know your domain name and you already have an email address, that's where, this is where you would put it. But uh, for now, it does require it, so. Let's get going and get some of this information in here. All right, this right here, the site maintenance account. What you are doing is creating the master user here. This is the user that basically controls and has admin rights with most of the time never having to specify it. There are some modules out there that even then you have to, but this is basically your master user, also known as user one. So I'm just gonna call this guy webmaster. My email address, I'm just going to, since it's in my clipboard, I'm just going to use my password that uh, was on the database. Not something I would totally recommend, but much quicker here to just kind of copy and paste what we already have. Um, we're going to set a country. I'm sitting here in the United States. Um, time zone right now, I can leave it there. That's pretty good. Um, all right, update notifications. Check for updates automatically. I recommend just getting started out. Basically, it's gonna tell you if there are any updates to Drupal. Remember when we downloaded Drupal Core, there was a version number. Um, this will notify you usually if there are version number changes. Most of the time it's for security reasons and some uh, security updates. And then receive email notifications. Uh, just go ahead and leave that on as well. And bam, all right we have a Drupal website. <clears throat> a couple things to understand what was just kind of going on right there, just, just so you know. Um, it was basically way back in the past, not too long ago actually, but it seems like forever ago. Um, inside all these Drupal files that we had, there was a folder here with a settings file. And we actually had to manually ed edit that and put some of that information in. Drupal 7 now will edit that file as you put that information in, and then will also change its permissions so no one else can do some naughty things to your website. All right, we can now visit your new site. Here we go. So now we have Drupal installed and up and running. So um, that's pretty much all we had to do to get it up and running locally. Not much different if you were using a remote server, except for after you had your files downloaded, you would have to use some type of FTP program um, to get the files to your server. On your server, more than likely, there's going to be some type of under your domain, a www or a htdocs or a public HTML folder, and that's where you would have to FTP these files up to that. And more than likely, your server probably offers, also offers PHP My Admin. So you would create your uh, database on your server, and then you would just go through the exact same process. You would visit the domain that you were installed in, and you're going to go through the same steps that we just did to get it installed. Um, so that's about it. Uh, Drupal's installed, and let's get working with it.